PK in the universe. And today I want to talk about five misconceptions I see about the Evercade. I picked up an Evercade VS back in January, so I'm pretty new to the ecosystem that is Evercade. I'm incredibly passionate about it. My son is really liking the Evercade as well, so I think that's part of why I'm so excited for it, because he's excited for it. And it's a system I really like, and I'm having a ton of fun with it. Is it perfect? No. I mean, but it's a $100 system. What would you expect for 100 bucks? But anyways, I want to go over five things that people say about the Evercade that are either kind of half-truths or misinformation or... I don't know what you want to call them, like excuses for why they don't like it or whatever. So here we go. Something I hear a lot of people say is that there are only old games on the Evercade. And that's just factually untrue. Like for example, the Indie Heroes Collection has 14 games that are indie homebrew games. Um, there's a lot of fantastic fun games on here. This is one of my favorite collections. I always say this is an S tier level Evercade game because there's just so much awesomeness on it. Honestly, I can't say enough about these games. You know, it would cost you a lot more to buy all these games on individually on Steam or to even to buy physical versions of any of these games. So yeah, I think it's an incredible value getting the Indie Heroes Collection. Plus there's the Mega Cat Studios Collections 1 and 2, which the first one I think has 10, and I want to say the other one has like 6 or 8 games, I can't remember. Then of course there's the Intellivision Collection, which actually has one homebrew game, and that game is called Princess Quest, and it's like basically the ghosts and goblins of Intellivision games, and it's a very challenging, fun game, and you're like, how the heck was this on Intellivision? It's just unbelievable. So yeah, there are not just old games. If somebody tells you that, they're factually wrong. Another thing I hear a lot of people say is, these are just a bunch of ROMs on a cartridge. Well, yeah, because guess what? Any cartridge ever, like from like the NES, the Super NES, the Sega Genesis, they had ROM files on them. Yeah, so that makes a lot of sense. That's very logical. But it's also an incredible oversimplification. These games are very different compared to a traditional cartridge. Take for example, I'm gonna use this as my example. This is any escape. Any Escape. This is a game I backed on Kickstarter. It was already done, you know, when it, they put it up on Kickstarter, so I knew I was going to get it. It is the first Escape Room NES game. I freaking love this game. It is fantastic. I also have it on Windows, and I have, of course, the ROM that I can play on an NES emulator if I want to. But one of the big problems with this game was when I got it. I popped it into my NES, and no problems at first, and then all of a sudden I run into a glitch. A glitch that basically just, yeah, it was a glitch that messed up the game. Now, the creator of it, uh, Kevin Hanley, he basically, you know, posted like, hey guys, I noticed there was a glitch, and if you send me the cart back, I'll, you know, fix it for you, basically. I think they just uh, reflashed the cart or something like that. The nice thing about Evercade carts is, let's say there's some type of glitch. What's really cool about how the system is updated, like, you know, you update the system via online, your Evercade VS, and when you put your cartridge in there, and for example, like you put in uh, the Technos collection, the Technos collection, I got issues with this thing. Some people might be like, oh, you're just hardcore, you know, you'll apologize for Evercade and everything. No, I was actually really disappointed with this initially, and the reason I was is because of the game Mania Challenge. The problem with Mania Challenge was originally when you put the cartridge in, and you played Mania Challenge, and let's say you were wrestling a guy because it's a wrestling game, if you got thrown out of the ring, you couldn't get back in the ring. That is a heck of an error they did. And there's been some other ones too, okay? And, but here's the nice thing, is when they put an update in or whatever, and you put this cartridge in, and you pick the game Mania Challenge, and it'll ask you if you want to update it, and you say yes, and it fixes it. And not only that, when you take the cart out, when you take that cart out, and let's say you put it in your portable Evercade, it's already fixed. You don't have to, re, you know, even if you didn't update that at Portable Evercade, it doesn't matter because it fixed the actual cartridge itself. Not only that, all the save states are on the cartridge. It makes me feel like how old video games used to be and how I wish the Switch was. I wish the Switch carts got updated. But you don't get that. That's what's cool about Evercade is the carts themselves get updated. One of the other things people talk about is alternatives to the Evercade. Like, just buy a Raspberry Pi. You know, the Pi Evangelists, you know? 
Well, here's the thing. Raspberry Pis have gone up significantly. This isn't 2019 anymore where you can get a Raspberry Pi for 50, 60 bucks. Those days have long since gone. So yeah, that's one, those are more expensive too. The problem with Raspberry Pi is you gotta bring your own fun. You can't, it's not just like, oh, you know, uh, you you know get your raspberry pi and all the emulators are available and all the roms are on there and it just works that's what i like about evercade you just buy the system you buy a cartridge or you, the cartridge is included with it you put the cartridge in and it just works you know i mean yeah obviously you can update the system and stuff and you should update the system but it just works you know it's just like the nes classic or snes classic you know us gamers you know who are really big into gaming and you know tinkering with stuff yeah we like to think everyone soft modded their you know nes classic and put all kinds of roms on there and stuff but most people didn't really care they just you know they bought that 60 dollar nes classic back in the day because i remember they were sitting in target kiosks forever and they just you know played those games and had themselves a ball it just worked and now you think at the end of the day that's what evercade is so appealing it just works it really appeals to people like me who i'm like i don't have time to be you know tinkering around with this crap honestly i there was a time i did but now lately i'm just like i just want a system that works i want a system with well curated games i don't want to be fiddling through 15,000 roms i don't want my son to have access to that many roms or i don't want to go to the trouble of trying to curate a rom collection just for him you know and again at the end of the day it's like yeah raspberry pi like well shoot man it's like if you're gonna go that route and the next thing you know why don't you get a mister you know like and you can hook all the stuff up together and it's like you know it's like come on yes there are other options i mean you could buy the original system you could buy an original snes but guess what this plays snes games it plays genesis games it plays nes games game boy games game boy color games game boy advance games ps1 games you're gonna buy all those systems of course you're not gonna buy it and sure maybe you could soft mod a wii or something but yeah, the Wii plays in, you know, 480p, you know, and this obviously plays on an HD TV and is made for an HD TV. And the emulators on this system are custom emulators. These aren't just, you know, stolen like Retron 5 stole a bunch of emulators and stuff, you know, and then made them available for commercial use, which is totally immoral or illegal, maybe both. Um, you know, these are custom built emulators and ROMs that, you know, de or deals were made to have these in there. So, you know, and these ROMs were specifically designed for these cartridges. So it's a different experience. So when people say, oh, I'll just get a Raspberry Pi, that's so stupid. Because one, you know, it's having you literally pirate games a lot of times. Because let's be honest, most people aren't dumping their own ROMs. And, you know, would you tell people, hey, go steal games from an indie dev? Would you tell people that? Probably not. You probably think, oh, that's kind of a little immoral. It's like stealing from a small business. Maybe you don't care about, you know, screwing over big corporations like Nintendo or whatever who got billions of dollars. But doing that to a poor indie dev is pretty crappy, honestly. So, yeah, when people say just buy a Raspberry Pi, I just kind of like have to roll my eyes. Because I've seen people say that when I talk about, oh, I'm excited about Evercade. They're like, just buy a Raspberry Pi. And it's like, that misses the point entirely. You know, it's just stupid. It's just as dumb as, you know, the people who were like, you know, we'd give people who bought an NES Classic a hard time about buying, just say buy a Raspberry Pi. It's like, well, I'm excited about Nintendo stuff. Man. I don't want to buy a Raspberry Pi, you know? So that's my thoughts on that part. So let's go to the next one. Number four, there are no exclusives on the Evercade. Well, that's true. There are no exclusives as in plural, but on the Indie Heroes collection, you see this character right here from Quest Arrest? Quest Arrest is a colorized version exclusive to Evercade. You can buy Quest Arrest, like the physical cartridge, for just the cartridge itself for like 15 bucks for Game Boy. And I think it's for complete in box, it's like 35 bucks. Or you can like grab the game on itch.io for pretty cheap. But there, you can't get the colorized version anywhere else. Kind of like how um, you could play Link's Awakening DX on a regular Game Boy, but you ain't getting into that secret dungeon and whatnot, and you know, kind of thing like that. So, technically speaking, there is an original game on here. Also, um, the Morph Cat collection is coming out actually in May, and there's actually going to be a demo for Micromages the Second Quest, because Micromages is on the Morph Cat collection. I'm really excited about getting that game actually in particular, because I've always wanted to get the Micromages game. I've heard so many good things about it. I heard it's a really fun four player game for the NES, and it's only 20, gonna be 20 bucks, you know, as opposed to buying a complete in box version for 60 bucks, or you could get 
a digital version for 10 bucks. But, you know, the way I look at it, you know, Micromages is what I'm buying that game for. And those two extra games that are on there, I think, I don't know what they are, like, are just, you know, that's that's bonus right now. And then, you know, there's another demo game, I think, on there as well. So that's kind of interesting. It's interesting how many different game collections are on some of these Evercades. Like, sometimes you get, like, 20 games. Sometimes you get, like, three or six or eight or ten you know it all depends it's all over the place you know and there's different levels of quality like i've always said the xeno crisis slash tanglewood game which is a dual pack you know those games are both s tier level games yeah there's a lot of great games on the evercade and i love the indie games the indie games is really what i'm most excited about for evercade you can because there's like gonna be 34 now or whatever and there's gonna be more to come No, 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 this one's really, really interesting. Somebody brought this up and they even put it in the title of their thumbnail or whatever. Basically, the insinuation was that this is a system that enables people to be hoarders. Yes, a console that currently only has 26 games enables people to be hoarders. I literally have 12. So let's say, let's say you're watching this in May and there's already 30 games out. That means I have 40% of the entire collection in 12 games. And that enables people to be hoarders. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, honestly. Literally every other game console, you could make that exact same argument is that it enables people to be hoarders because it's so collectible. Like literally, there are countless collections. I would argue the exact opposite is true. Take for example, the Technos collection. Uh, the very first Evercade video I ever made was about the Technos collection. What's really nice about the Technos collection is I've owned a lot of these games. I owned Double Dragon 1 and 2 on NES. I owned um, Super Double Dragon at one point on SNES. So, and those games are kind of expensive by themselves. So this helps me like pare down my collection. It's like, oh, I don't need those because I have a physical cart right here. Or think about the Renovation Collection. The Renovation Collection, which is coming out at the end of this month is fantastic there are some amazing games games i've played on emulators yeah games i could play and i'm excited to play on a cartridge and actually own because the games are fantastic and super expensive a lot of these games are insanely expensive like i know a guy who's got el viento and he's got some of the valis games i know him on twitter his name's k chan if k chan decides to sell those games off or whatever you can get you can get a pretty princely sum of money for those and you could actually buy other things you want and then just go you know pick up this 20 dollars cart that's what i love about evercade the games are so cheap they're like 20 bucks a piece you'd have to be a total cheapskate to be like oh evercade games are too expensive and the system's only 99 bucks. I don't know what it is in other countries, but here in the US, I can honestly say, like, that's not a lot of money. And what I love about, again, Evercade, you know, people, again, they say it enables hoarding. How does it enable hoarding? Because they're compilations. Again, part of the reason I love Evercade so much is because I'm a big fan of compilations. Like, for example, I have this Intellivision compilation right here. Now, the emulation on this thing, it's, it's, it's okay. It's not very good but it does the job, it plays the Intellivision games. But I also really like, you know, my Intellivision collection I just got on Evercade, and I'm planning to get the second one that's coming out actually in May, and I plan to do like a compare and contrast of that too, because I'm really curious how those games, there are pros and cons to owning both those collections, but I'm a big fan of owning collections. So yeah, and yeah, sure, I like to go to the flea market and the Goodwills and the thrift stores, charity shops, as they call them over across the pond once in a while. But I also understand there's a lot of people who don't like to do that, who don't actually like to just go out to these dirty old thrift stores, these dirty old swap meets and just, you know, shuffle through a bunch of nasty old dusty games. A lot of people don't want to do that crap. They just want something where, oh, I can just order this cart online. It's $20 and then it's mine and I can just pop the game in and play. There's a lot of value in Evercade and a lot of people just don't see it. So I want to make a video just addressing this because I see so many people saying stuff like, oh, you could just buy a Raspberry Pi or there's no exclusives, you know, or this enables people to be hoarders, which is just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, honestly, considering how many game consoles have more games that you could potentially hoard. Now, the thing about what is a hoarder, though, is a really interesting concept or what is a gaming addict. I mean, you could literally call any collector a hoarder or a gaming addict, and you could probably find some validity to that. But the thing about it is, 
I mean, it, you don't know who is and isn't. You know, you might see some dude with a giant wallow games behind him, you know, showing off his gamer cred, you know. You don't know what else he has somewhere else. He might have like a 50, 50 of these cartridges in a shoebox somewhere. Yeah, that would be hoarding, of course. But yeah, just because you have Evercade games does not make you a hoarder or gaming addict. In fact, it probably makes you the opposite, especially if you're using these collections to pare down your existing collections so you don't have all this extra space wasted. I put all my games in dressers and, uh, and in cabinets. I don't like to have a wallow games. I thought that's super cliche nowadays. You know, everybody does that. But anyhow, I don't really have much else to say. What are your guys' thoughts? Uh, what are some misconceptions you find people have about Evercade? Um, did this video help you at all? That would be really great to know. Comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay awesome in this universe. Thanks. Bye.